Well, we think of it as an upside-down tree, be it oak, birch, or pine. Each node, just as in a tree, is there for a reason. And no extra charge for the philosophy. Nature and green philosophy aside, let's look at the same hierarchies from a different perspective. Independent of the function or area, and structurally speaking, hierarchies can be classified several ways. We look at hierarchies as being three major types, leveled or structured, ragged or asymmetric, and hybrid or combination. Taking a simple example of a U.S. geography hierarchy structure, we have a neat four-level hierarchy. Each level has its own attributes. In this example, country has ISO code 23, IOC code, WMO code, and FIPS code. When expanding the scope to a worldwide hierarchy, you see challenges. For example, the U.S. has a four-level administrative structure, while India only has a one-level subdivision. Conversely, Guernsey has no subdivisions, only cities. But Singapore is a single country state city. As you can see, a simple hierarchy has now become quite complicated. Let's look at some different structural options for managing a world geography hierarchy. One option is to manage the hierarchy in a way that allows us to skip levels where not relevant. When we skip levels, we are creating alternate routes from root to leaf, or alternate hierarchies. Consequently, there is no redundancy. Another option is to force fit each level with the parent or inherit the parent if the parent is missing. This is a redundancy prone hierarchy which is best suited for reporting tools. So in this example, Singapore would have the same value at all four levels whereas levels two and three would be the same for India. Now we do have scenarios where countries have three level subdivisions but there's a price to pay when adopting this type of redundant approach. Ragged hierarchies start with basic one parent multiple child nodes as in chart of accounts. Each node has the same attributes or characteristics as its parent. There is no concept of levels or names given to the levels. As mentioned earlier, the root to leaf for one node can vary from one to another. The variation of ragged hierarchy, as in ownership hierarchies, we call network recursive, as a node can belong to multiple parents. As you will see later, if effective dating is set on relationships, a simple ragged hierarchy will become network recursive in its underlying model. Reporting and BI tools work best with flat structures. Generational hierarchy is a flattened view of the ragged hierarchy. It's good for reporting, but by no means a structure that should be used for managing hierarchies. Generational view levels may or may not have logical names. Still, another option for the geography hierarchy we saw earlier is to manage it as a ragged hierarchy, but report it as a flattened structure with each level given a name. Most common examples of combination hierarchies involve management hierarchies that are inherently ragged and linked to the lowest level cost center, or entities similar to that to the form the lowest level. Then there are combination strategies, or hybrids, where management of hierarchies is optimized and additional reporting views are employed to create a flattened structure. An example of this we just saw with the geographic hierarchy a couple of slides ago. In this case, option three is the illustration of the same type. First, manage as alternate. Create a flattened structure for reporting. Second, manage as ragged. Report as generations. Third, we've already discussed. In the fourth example, especially when it comes to ownership hierarchies, 
we have sometimes seen these being reported with primary ownership. Thus, a legal entity that belongs to multiple parents can be viewed as being linked to one parent. The parent determined by percentage ownership. Finally, derived hierarchies or hierarchy mapping. Sometimes necessary, but should be avoided. The scenarios we have seen is where we create a three-level management hierarchy structure from an inherent ragged management hierarchy. In a more complex example, a global reporting hierarchy mapped to multiple instances of local classifications so as to enable global reporting. It's difficult to manage as both sides are changing. Let's talk about change management for hierarchies. Some of you, coming from a data warehouse background, would refer to this as slowly changing or type 2 dimensions. Or some of you would prefer to approach this from a version number perspective. Okay, let's look at some of the options that are going to be laid out in the following slides. Earlier, we talked about hierarchies in a functional context and then discussed hierarchies classified by structure independent of the functional context. But change management is not dependent on the structure at all and is in fact more dependent on the type of data and functional usage. The most common approach to change management in hierarchies, such as chart of accounts, is in fact versioning the release as the workflow and dates for release are fixed. Here the changes are random and no fixed period of release is mandated, such as organization hierarchy changes. This typically happens in a reorganization. It helps if only reorgs can be predicted, or for that matter mergers and acquisitions with ownership hierarchies. The most optimal approach is the same as slowly changing effective dating. With some hierarchies, such as organization structures or product branding structures, there might be a legal reason or a reporting requirement to take periodic snapshots at point in time. Note the archive snapshot option as we outline here. Note as well an event-based history builder option is based on this type of change where effective dated archive records are created. This can be customized by type of change. Versioning is the most effective option when no tool is in place. In fact, we had version numbers given to this